switch off the transparency. Didn't think we'd get out of that. What happened? The controls froze. Groot used one of his gadgets. You see how he missed? We got behind a fragment of cosmic waste. That's what blew up. We have to land as soon as we can. We're traveling at 2,500. In a few minutes, I'll start looking for an airfield. Take these two back to work. Go. Professor Dawn, any false move will sacrifice your daughter's life. She will stay here as a guarantee that you will follow my orders. Come on, Rick. Alden. Yes, Professor? Did you notice anything in particular on the transparency when Dr. Groove used the cosmic cannon? You mean something other than the destruction of the atomic plane? The plane was not destroyed. That's impossible. I'm sure if you didn't see what happened, Dr. Groove didn't either. The charge from the cannon destroyed a fragment of cosmic waste. The plane was behind it, and I hope that's safely buried. Will you be able to find out? At the proper time. Until then, we'll continue with our work. All right, Professor. Got feet on Earth again. Say, we better take these clothes off. <laughs> yeah, they would look kind of funny down here. You going to use the plane again? Yes, later. I've got some unfinished business in Earth Grove. Well, how can you find it? Isn't it a lost planet? Professor Dorn took care of that. He perfected the gyro electron, and equipped with a directional finder, it'll guide the plane automatically back to Earth Grove. With the atomic reactor, there's no worry about fuel. Right. What's next? I'm going to run down the mad scientist that's working out of Mount Vulcan. That's where my car went into the ditch. I was locked out, and when I came to, I was on the lost planet. Groot's got to be stopped before he fortifies their grow of fantastic weapons and turns them on the Earth. How about counting me in on the project? I'll sure need some help. I'd almost forgotten I had a name. It's Wesley Brand. I'm Rex Barrow. Okay, Rex, we're in this together. First, I've got some business I have to take care of in town. So have I. Let's make arrangements about the plane. Java on Earth calling Dr. Groot on the planet Ergro. Come in, Dr. Groot. Java on Earth calling Dr. Groot on the planet Ergro. Come in, Dr. Groot. This is Dr. Groot. Come in, Java. I'm reporting a plane from space picked up on telescope at 18,000 on the Celestial Gambit. I know. The plane took off from Ergro. I followed course the plane. It has landed at an isolated airfield here. That is impossible. The plane was destroyed. The plane came through. Cosmic waste was blown up at 12,000. The plane was behind it. Why didn't you call me at once? I didn't identify the plane until it made a landing. Then I recognized R-12. He brought R-9 with him. Maintain radar scope contact with the plane. I'll return by Cosmo jet at once. That is all. It seems impossible that R-12's plane got through. Don't waste time discussing it. Have a Cosmo jet prepared for blast off. R-4, come in. R-4, reporting. Prepare a Cosmo jet for blast off. Confirming. We'll prepare for blast off. Put all stations on the alert. Have the cosmic cannon mounted outside the cave. Wait at the storage room for me. We'll have to figure out a way to get to Professor Dorn. What's happened? We can't talk here. We'll have to deliver these power units. All our controls are set here. Blast off.
So you finally showed up, huh? Where's Tim? He's still on the planet Ergo. And I'm still stuck with that harebrained story about lost planets. How did you get back here? An atom-powered plane. It's a long story. I'll, I'll bet it is. But what I want to know is, do you still have a little interest in this Earth-bound newspaper? Or do you intend to stay up there in the clouds? Boss, you're going to break the greatest story of all. But when? I'm getting a little impatient. First, I'm going to run down that mad scientist on Mount Vulcan. You didn't come back here to go all over that science fiction again. Now, what is it this time? Well, the fact is, I need a little expense money. Oh, don't tell me you can spend American dollars on a lost planet. No, but I, I need it before I take off. I don't know why I always fall for these wild yarns. Boss, this is the best investment you've ever made. I've made some bad ones, too. Take that to the cashier. Thanks. Hi, Hopper. Hi. Well, where have you been? Boss has been worried about you at the end. Ain't he always in? <laughs> What happened to you? We found your car on Mount Boston, but no sign of you. It's a long story, Chief. Well, it should be. You've been gone for over a month. <laughs> I think you'd better sit down, Chief. I'm afraid you couldn't take this one standing up. Hello? <laughs> well, we came in and landed. And when we left the airfield, they headed straight here. It doesn't make sense. Now that you're back here, just figure it was a bad dream. I got a better idea. Yeah, like what? You're the big wheel in the novelty business, just like you were when slot machines were legal. Mm -hmm. So? Suppose you could make the whole world one big slot machine. I'd like that. Go on. Well, if we could take over Doc Groot and Professor Dorn and all their gimmicks... Yeah, but they sound like a couple of smart monkeys. Ah, there never was anybody you couldn't outsmart. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then what? So we take over this lost planet, and everybody on Mother Earth pays off, if they want business as usual. Hopper, come in here. Yeah, boss, what's on your mind? You are going to Ergro. Ergo? Well, where's that? I never heard of it. Never mind, get ready. Okay, I'll get the car gas up. It's in space. You're flying. Okay. Space! <laughs> we'll start by taking over Grood's lab inside Mount Falcon. Rex Barrow can get us in. Say, what about that guy? We'll use him for a while and we'll get rid of him. Well, who is this Rex character? You're meeting this afternoon. I'll call in some more men in case you need help. We'll just have him stand by. Good. Come on, let's grab some food. Okay. We'll place it in a doorknife container and have it ready for use at all times. We may have to create a band of invisibility to enable Rex to return to Erdlow. We'll wait here until the hermit shows. He's the only one who can lead us into the mountain. Hopper, I'll handle the hermit. Hey, Hopper. Sure. Jarva, I must go to the airfield to inspect the plane R-12 used. Uh, it's, um, it's 10 miles west of here, off Highway 92, sir. Keep alert. We must be prepared for any move they make. Yes, sir.
Let's go get him. No. You'll have to pass here. Just a minute, Pop. We're going back to the shack for a little talk. Come on. Make that thing work and let us into the cave. I can convince him. Take it easy, Hopper. Rex will handle it. You don't want us to break it up, do you? might lead us into a trap. If you do, Pop, you'll be in there with us. be sent to Erd Grow to become slaves? Be sure to see A Stray in Space, Chapter 8 of The Lost Planet, at this theater next week.